Japan and India are teaming up to send a lander and a rover to the moon's south pole, where they hope to find some ice or liquid water. Why? Well, maybe they're thirsty. Or maybe they want to make some moon tea. Or maybe they just want to beat NASA and SpaceX to the punch. Whatever the reason, this mission is going to be epic. But before we dive into the details, let me tell you more about this mission. It's called LUPEX, which stands for Lunar Polar Exploration. I know it sounds like a brand of toothpaste, but it's actually a very serious mission that will be a joint project between JAXA, the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency, and ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization. JAXA will provide the launch vehicle and the rover, while ISRO will provide the lander. The mission is scheduled to launch no earlier than 2025 on Japan's new H-3 rocket which is still under development. The rocket is supposed to be cheaper and more reliable than Japan's previous rockets, and we'll see how that goes. But here's the main question. Why are Japan and India so obsessed with finding water on the moon? Well, they're not the only ones. Almost every big country wants a piece of the moon. The moon is like the precious ring from the Lord of the Rings, and countries are like Gollum, coveting it and fighting for it. So there must be a reason, right? Actually, there are many reasons and water seems to be at the top of the list. Water is kind of a big deal, you know. It's not just something you drink when you're thirsty, it's what makes life possible on Earth, and maybe on the moon too. Who knows, maybe there are some tiny aliens in the lunar ice chilling in the dark craters waiting for us to say hello. Okay, maybe not, but it's fun to imagine. And that's not all. There are more reasons to look for water on the moon. We can also use water to grow some plants on the moon or make some fuel for our rockets and maybe water can tell us something about the history of the moon and its connection with Earth. Or maybe it's just a cosmic joke, because it's so hard to find and reach. But where is water on the moon? Well, most of the moon is as dry as bone, but there are some spots near the poles that are always in the dark. These spots are hidden by craters or mountains, and they are very cold, about minus 230 degrees Celsius, or minus 382 degrees Fahrenheit. That's colder than Pluto. And Pluto is so cold that it got kicked out of the Planet Club. In these spots, water could exist as ice or liquid in tiny amounts. How did water get there? Well, there are a few possible ways. Comets or asteroids that smashed into the moon a long time ago, leaving some ice behind. Solar wind that blew some hydrogen into lunar rocks, creating some water molecules. Or volcanic activity that spewed some water vapor from below the surface like a lunar geyser. But how do we even know there is water on the moon in the first place? Well, we have some evidence from previous missions that have detected signs of water on the moon. For example, NASA's Lunar Prospector Orbiter found some hydrogen at the poles in 1998, which was a good sign. Then India's Chandrayaan-1 Orbiter saw some water molecules on the surface in 2008. And more recently, in 2020, NASA's SOFIA Airborne Observatory saw some water molecules in sunlit areas near the South Pole. So yeah, we have some hints of water on the moon, but we don't know how much or how pure it is. That's where Lupex comes in. Lupex will land near the south pole of the moon, where it's not too hot and not too cold, but just right. Well, not really, it's actually freezing and dark most of the time. But that's where the water is, or so they say. The lander will drop a rover that will roam around and look for water using its fancy gadgets. The rover will also drill into the ground and collect some dirt that it will examine with its tools. The rover will be smart and independent and will talk to the lander, which will send data back to Earth. Sounds like a fun adventure, yeah, maybe for the rover, but not for us. We'll just have to wait and see what it finds. But hey, Lupex is not going solo on this mission. It has some buddies from other agencies who are tagging along. NASA is giving a neutron spectrometer to the rover, which is like a metal detector that can sniff out hydrogen under the surface. Remember how I said earlier that countries are like golems fighting for the moon? Well, maybe NASA is trying to be sneaky and spy on Japan and India's mission. You know what they say, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Or maybe I'm just paranoid and watch too many spy movies. By the way, ESA, the European Space Agency, is giving a mass spectrometer to the rover, which will help to smell the gas pressure and composition on the surface. These instruments will work together and give us more clues about water on the moon. Lupex is expected to last for at least one year or about 14 lunar days. That's longer than some marriages. During this time, it will explore an area of about 10 square kilometers or 4 square miles. That's about the size of a small city or a big park. It will try to answer some questions such as, 
How much water is there on the moon? How pure is it? How is it distributed? And how can we use it to make moon tea? Yeah, I made that one up, but it would be nice. So Lupex is a very ambitious mission. It's also very risky. There are many things that could go wrong, from the launch to the landing to the exploration. The launch vehicle H3 is still under development and has not been tested yet. That's like going on a road trip with a car that has no wheels. The landing site near the South Pole is very rugged and has low illumination. The communication between the rover and the lander and between the lander and Earth could be affected by terrain or interference. And finally, the rover could encounter obstacles or hazards on its way such as rocks or craters. It might be like trying to walk on a minefield or a lava field. But hey, no pain, no gain, right? Lupex is not afraid of these challenges. It's ready to face them and overcome them. But Japan and India are not the only kids on the lunar block. There are other bullies who want to push them around and take his lunch money. Or his water, in this case. For instance, NASA, the big boss of space exploration, has a huge plan called Artemis. Artemis is like Apollo's twin sister, but with more attitude and more bling. NASA wants to send people back to the moon by 2024 and build a home there by 2028. They also want to use the moon as a springboard for jumping to Mars. Why? Because they think the moon is a good place to practice living on Mars, since it has some of the same problems like cold, radiation, dust and low gravity. And also the moon is closer to Earth than Mars, so it's easier and faster to send people and supplies there and back. Another rival is China. China has been very busy and very good at sending probes and rovers to the moon. But the moon is not enough for China. In fact, China has a plan to reach the solar system, and it deserves its own video. And guess what? We have that video for you! Just click here to watch how China takes over the moon, space, and even the solar system. If everything goes according to plan, which it usually doesn't when it comes to space, but if it does, China will change the future of the space race and potentially make the whole solar system its own backyard. But that's not all. Before you go, I have one more thing to tell you. It might sound cliche, but it really matters for the success of the channel. Are you listening? Well, here it goes. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to stay updated on our future videos. Thank you for watching. See you next time with more amazing space news.